The moment you begin to think that man will solve your problems, you're walking in a curse. And what does that actually mean? You're walking in darkness. The moment you think this man is the one that will help us, this man is the one that will solve our problems. The moment you begin to think like that, then you're walking in a curse. Now understand this, as God's children, we function in two different roles. For example, we are Nigerians. And then number two, we belong to another kingdom. That's the kingdom of God, praise God. The kingdom of heaven. We belong to that kingdom. And we have responsibilities in both kingdoms. I need you to understand this. Our responsibility to the kingdom of God is remember the Bible calls us as ambassadors. We are ambassadors on this earth. So we have a responsibility in our original kingdom because that's where we were born. Are you hearing me? We were born in, in, in the kingdom of heaven. We were born in Zion. Our names are written in the book of life. Praise God. So we are born there. But then we are here now as representatives of the kingdom of heaven. And being here, we have roles to play over here. And if we don't understand our role, we will keep making this same mistake year in, year out without learning. That's why I said at the beginning, the church doesn't seem to have grown. Because we are supposed to have grown in knowledge. Now remember, we are the light of the world. If we don't grow, the world will not grow. We can't be preaching the same thing for seven years and expect the world to grow. We can't be seeing things the same way we saw them seven years ago and expect there to be growth. It is not possible. So first you look at the light. What has changed about the light? What has changed about the light? Do we see better? Do we understand better? When you do something and you realize it didn't work out the way you expected it to work out, what do you do? We are sharing yesterday about David. David had the desire to bring the ark. And he said, the Bible said he got a new cart. And got some of the best trained soldiers to guard the ark. And they went to carry the ark from where the Philistines had left it. They went to carry the ark. And so they put it in this best cart. Now he did that because this, this ark carries the presence of God. And so it has to be treated in a very special way. Now that's honor from David, right? He honored God by treating the ark in a special way. He got a new car. He didn't just say, look, just carry it anyhow. No, he got a new cart for it. Got the best trained soldiers to guard it. And they were on that journey, coming with the ark. Everybody was excited. Wow, finally, the ark of God will come to his resting place. God's presence will be restored in our nation. They were excited and going. And suddenly, they got to this ground that wasn't level. And the ark shook. The, the, the cat shook. And when the cat, cat shook, the ark was about to roll off and fall. Now, you know what that, what that would mean if this ark should fall. And here's this soldier, one of the men that was guarding the name Uzzah. He saw that if we don't do anything, this ark is going to fall. So he stretched out his hand and caught the ark from falling. And what did the Bible say? The Bible said the anger of the Lord was kindled against him and God killed him. Now, why did God kill him? This man wanted to do something good. I mean, who can bring an accusation against him? His intention, his action. Where is the accusation you want to bring against the man? Where did he go wrong? Now, we may look at it here and say, Ah, no, maybe the man committed adultery or fornication before he went to carry the ark. 
but no one told them the principles about carrying the ark. But even if that was the case, was his action wrong? And David, hearing, hearing that news, because now nobody could explain what happened. So the news got to David and David said, no, something is wrong. How did he die? But we don't know what happened. He didn't fall. Nobody hit him. <laughs> you understand? He just, he just fell and, and died like that. He, he was trying to catch the ark. And that's how he fell. And he just died like that. <laughs> now, have you ever asked yourself, the man that wanted to catch the ark died. So what happened to the ark? Did the ark fall? There was no record that the ark fell. Praise God. There was no record that the ark fell. But they knew that the death of Uzzah was connected to that action of his. So everybody became afraid. So what's going to happen now? If we enter another place, that's, <laughs> should we let the ark fall? Or what's going to happen? And David said, you know what? Where's the nearest place in that area? They said, oh, there's... there's uh, Obedidon's farmland is here. He said, okay, um, can you guys manage and take it to his house? We will try. <laughs> and uh, you can imagine how everybody fearfully <laughs> was escorting the ark and then they got to Obedidon's house and they left it there. Obedidon, the king said we should leave this ark here. Ah, why? We don't know. <laughs> I don't think they told him the full story. <laughs> Praise God. And so, Obedidon knew something special was in his house. And of course, he hallowed it. But then suddenly, Obedidon's house began to prosper. I told you yesterday, I said, it wasn't God that killed Uzzah. Now, when you understand scriptures, you will know this truth. It wasn't God that killed Uzzah. It was the angel that was sent to guard the ark that killed Uzzah. Are you following me? There was an angel whose job was to protect the ark. And that kind of angel is not a regular angel. That kind of angel, they are called um, like cherubs with flaming swords. The kind that God told to go guard the way to the tree of life. You understand? Now those are the angels that, that protect assets that are precious before the Lord, here on earth. So that angel was guarding the ark. And so when they were doing all their drama, he was watching. He wasn't happy about it, but he was watching. They want to carry the ark. Okay, yes, the ark is supposed to be transported. So that part is okay. But the manner with which you guys are transporting is a problem. But let, let, let me just chill and hope everything goes right. So the moment, now the job of that angel is to see to it that no one crosses the line where that ark is concerned. To see to it that no one touches that ark. That's his job. So the moment Uzzah stretches out to touch the ark, he crossed the line. And the angel didn't think twice because he will be failing at his job. He struck him dead immediately. Are you listening to me? Now that's how angels operate. That's how angels operate. They don't check your face. The assignment is the most important thing that they look at. So he killed him. And after killing him, I believe that angel felt sorry. But he had carried out his job. So when the ark got to Obedidon's house, most likely that angel might have been even rebuked from heaven. You know what I mean by that? Hey, you were so harsh. <laughs> but I was doing my job. So he can't be judged for that because he was doing his job. I saw a video, uh, 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 I think earlier today, I saw a video where um, the candidate, Atiku, was going somewhere and someone ran 
to lie on the floor. He, they were walking, you know. So someone ran to lie on the floor, maybe to like just worship him or whatever, Dobale or something. And the moment the guy laid on, just in front of him, you know, he was walking. The moment the guy laid on, it's, it's, it's online. The moment the guy laid on him, you can see another guy on suit kicking him and just pushing him out of the way. And people began to comment and say, see how wicked Atiku is. You know that kind of thing? That we need a leader who has empathy and all that. And, and, and I thought to myself, that guy was just doing his job. At that moment, if he's to be judged, he did the right thing. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm talking, I'm not talking about Atiku. I'm talking about the person that rushed him. According to his training, he did the right thing. Because your job is to guard this man. And you are there, walking. You can't smile. I, I, your job is to see that there is no security breach. Then all of a sudden, from nowhere, if he had sighted the guy coming from a distance, he would have prepared for him. Then from nowhere, the person you're guarding, someone just rushed in front. You don't know what is his intention. You don't want to know whether he's a supporter or... Uh, uh, <laughs> that's none of your business. Your business is someone is breaching your, pro your security protocol. You take care of the situation first before you think. Because if that person came to attack, why you're trying to think is he a supporter or not, your principal is gone. Are uh, you understanding what I'm saying? Now this is how things are processed. You can say anything you want to say. Now I'm using that to describe how angels operate. So David began to hear, Obedidom's house is prospering. Uh, when? Since when? So from the look of this, since we left that ark in his house, things started changing in his house. Like, really? Uh, the ark has not killed anybody because they were expecting that news would be coming from Obedidom that his first son is dead. <laughs> you know? And the next day, his second son is dead. His daughter is dead. All the animals in his, in his, in his farm, dead. That's what they were expecting. Because this thing has become a killer. But instead of that, they were hearing set different kinds of miracles were happening in obedience. And David said, no, 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 no. Something is wrong. And David did a wise thing. You know what David did? He went back to the book to check what exactly did we do wrong. He went into that investigation. And in doing so, he found out that he did something wrong. The ark was not the problem. They were the problem. They realized that God has prescribed the way you carry the ark. It's not about a new cart. It's not about the kind of honor you choose to do to the ark. There is a prescribed order that God had given that only priests were allowed to carry the ark and they must carry it on their shoulder. The same thing that a man tried to touch and the man was killed. They found that it was prescribed that people are supposed to carry the ark on their shoulders. So it was not the touching of the ark that was the problem. It was who touched it. So when David realized that, he repented before the Lord and said, okay, Lord, now the problem was not the ark. We didn't do it in the right order. So now, hey guys, let's move the ark. They got the right priest in their rightful garments, praise God. And they went and they carried the ark and they came back to Jerusalem. Now, David was smart enough not to just hear, when he heard that, you know, Obedidon's house is prosperous, he said, ah, maybe the anger of the Lord has been at peace. Can we go and carry the ark from there now? Are you getting what I'm saying? No, he knew. Now, that's the smartest thing to do. When you try what you think is right, but it turns out to be wrong. Instead of it to wake up and say, I want to go and try again. First pause, go back to the scripts and check what went wrong. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's what you do first. What went wrong? So we had all our hopes high in 2014, 2015. We had our hopes high and to many the hopes were dashed. 
How many have gone back? I'm talking to Christians. How many have gone back to the books to sit down and look at it carefully and find out what they did do wrong before now? <laughs> 